other states should take on similar laws like that? I think it's, a, I, I think it's a, a, an indictment upon our federal government that states like Arizona actually have to move forward uh, because of a, a flawed and, and failed federal policy. You know, very seriously, this is possibly outside of strategic national security, the most important issue of our time. If you're running business, the most important thing you can do is hire good people. Mm -hmm. When you're a country, the most important thing you can do is make sure that the folks coming to your country, uh, you know, that you afford them the opportunity of citizenship and that, that you are building a, a, a great reservoir of leadership and strength moving forward. Right now we have a, a federal immigration policy that forces six to seven million people right now to wait in line for an average of seven years. Between immigration attorneys and the bureaucracy, they spend thousands of dollars. I can take you around my district and introduce you to immigrants, whether they're on green cards or trying to become citizens, who are building businesses, uh, who are doing the right thing, who are paying taxes, and our federal government treats them uh, like a number, worse than a number. And uh, in many instances, beats them over the head every single year when all they want to do is to learn the language, mm -hmm. become American citizens, pay taxes, and prosper. We've got to make that system easier. We've got to make legal immigration, legal with an L, easier. At the same time, while those six to seven million people wait in line, we have one million illegal aliens that stream mm -hmm. across our border every year um, looking for a better standard of living for themselves. But they stream across that border without a criminal background check and without a medical uh, record. Usually they come across the border and we don't know they're coming across the border. And oh, and we do. We look the other way in many, exactly. in many instances. And in a post-9-11 environment, it's not only about the one million illegal aliens who are crossing the border, <clears throat> because there are tunnels, that especially they go under our southern border, but all of our borders that you could drive a truck through. And there are illegal aliens who are relying upon coyotes as smugglers. Mm -hmm. Some of these illegal aliens actually pay the coyotes $50,000. If you're paying somebody $50,000 to get you into the United States of America, you're not going to go cut lawns in Westchester County. There's something else going on there. The amount of drugs and the, and mm -hmm. the, the limited number of terrorists who are coming across that border in a post-9-11 environment, we've got to secure it. But the one million illegal aliens, upwards of, depending upon the year, when they come into this country, we welcome them into indentured servitude. It is a modern-day slave economy where the very, um, the, the very sense of their illegal status allows them to be more easily exploited. So you have an immigration policy that is uh, outright unfair, is patently un-American, and the reason why we allow is because some Republicans view cheap labor, and they have this kind of noblesse oblige sense of, oh, well, you know, they were living in much, in much more squalor in, in, in Guatemala or Mexico, so it's okay that we only pay them this amount, and they live 30 to a house with cockroaches on the wall. But you know what? I have nice rock walls, and my grass is well cut. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, some of these very arguments were given by the landed aristocracy in the South during uh, the, the debates that we had about slavery in this country. So you have re some Republicans who view cheap labor, and then Democrats who see future votes. And meanwhile, it's unfair to legal immigrants. It is, it is unfair from an upward mobility citizen, citizenship status to illegal aliens. It's unfair to small business owners who are trying to obey the law, mm -hmm. right? And, it is, and the taxpayers, middle class taxpayers, blue collar folks, are flipping the bill. In New York mm -hmm. State alone, it costs taxpayers over $5 billion a year. So people talk about, oh, well, my, you know, my grass is cut and it's cheap and my walls look very nice. But at the end of the day, it costs taxpayers because of emergency room visits, incarceration, and social services over run. $5 billion a year. And it does suppress the overall wage rate. Well, you did just state it basically that by putting them through the system, we're spending more money. Illegals. We're putting them through the system. So you just said they're being incarcerated or, you know, trying to deport them. Now you try to deport them, then they have to go through the deportation hearings and, and the most appointed attorneys. Yeah. Don't you think that's the most even more expenses that how can we, what can we do to make that obviously from not? My pers from my perspective, it's very simple. We need to secure our borders. And in the age of JetBlue, that means our ports, it means our airports, it means our northern border, our southern border. In a post-9-11 post environment, we've got to secure our borders. We should not even be having a discussion about comprehensive immigration reform until we do that. So secure our borders, and people say we can't do it. We have troops all around the world that are securing the borders of nations that, that I cannot even pronounce. We can do it on, on our borders in the United States of America. Once you've done that, 
uh, for the illegal aliens who are here currently, for those who break the law, criminal illegal aliens, mm -hmm. deport them tomorrow. There's no reason to have them in our prisons at $50,000 a year. They can I serve agree. in their own nation's prisons at their own nation's expense. Deport those criminal illegal aliens immediately. And, and, and since we will secure our borders, we won't see a revolving door. To those who are outside of their unlawful immigration status uh, are here, once you have secured the borders, which is critical, allow them in a, an intense pathway to citizenship that is expedited, pay back taxes and begin paying taxes, learn the Engl English language and become an American citizen on an expedited time frame. And then lastly, um, open up the process for legal immigration, for people to come here from Germany to Guatemala and everywhere in between, embrace legal immigration. So that goes along with your county initiative that you want to, I guess, propose or plan to attack this issue of illegal yeah. immigration. Well, until the federal government does their job, and I, I really hope that in this election that they will see it as uh, a mandate to get something done on immigration, states like Arizona and counties like ours are forced to take it upon themselves. Take it upon themselves. So, uh, I mean, right now we have we have counties, we have towns that are using taxpayer dollars to mm -hmm. employ illegal aliens. That's patently absurd. You know, I mean, when you have taxpayers and families who are out of work, when you have taxpayers uh, who can't, you know, are, can't make ends meet, to think that we're using taxpayer dollars to employ illegal aliens and to help illegal contractors, uh, we've got to stop. And that, I think so. that's what bothers people the most: that you, as a citizen, paying taxes and you're losing money because we're now supporting people who are not even citizens. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at if you if you and I went down to Disney World. Uh, there's a fence around Disney World. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing that there's a fence around Disney World, but <laughs> we're still debating whether there should be a fence on our on our borders. Very true. So there's a fence around Disney World. If we decided, you know what, I don't know about this entrance fee. This is a little too much. I, I don't know what it costs. If it costs 50 bucks, whatever it is. And we said, you know what, to heck with it. We're just going to climb over the fence. If we climbed over the fence to Disney World, we'd be arrested. Yes. When you climb over the fence that doesn't exist in the United States of America, you're afforded free health care. You're uh, welcome. Your children can go to school for free. You don't have to pay taxes. Uh, now, sure, your employers can uh, abuse the situation, which they often do, um, to pay a suppressed rate. But it, it's amazing, you know, comparing those two worlds. And we have prevailing wage jobs, projects, state projects, local projects, where the contractors bid the project at taxpayer expense on a prevailing wage. They're supposed to be paying their employers, their employees, a prevailing wage. They hire illegal aliens, fly by night, have them put up sheetrock at night, whatever they have to do, and they pay them in cash, off the books, sometimes on the books, a much lower rate. Mm -hmm. So the taxpayers already paid the bill at the prevailing wage rate, and the contractor pockets all that, all of those dollars. According to a Cornell study, which is not exactly you know some conservative authoritarian educational regime, they did, did a study that, that showed that it's costing New York State taxpayers billions of dollars every year through 1099 misclassification. So there's some very simple things that we can do to crack down on that illegal alien economy. And thank God we were able to stop Spitzer before he handed out one million uh, driver's licenses to illegal aliens and, and certainly a couple of terrorists. Well, I think that there are a lot of issues that on a local, you know, county, state level need to be addressed about, you know, illegal immigration issues. And it's not that we're not welcoming legal right. immigration. That's, you know, understandable that obviously we can't close our borders off to everybody, but illegally something needs to be done. Sure. And we welcome people that want to come to America because we know living here that this is one of the greatest, it is, I'm sorry, excuse me, the greatest place you know to live in the world and right. you have people coming here in droves because of that so something needs and to be need done them. to yeah, keep the them. people here that respect that and know that and the people that don't respect that and know that and come here illegally and without a background check that are just causing more problems for our country to deal with obviously there's solutions it sounds like that right. you have for some of these problems and Absolutely. I think that we're out of time right no now yes I think we are, actually. We're not? Okay. <laughs> I thought Next that question. we were. All right. So, I had a question about your stance on pro-life versus pro-choice. And I can tell you disagree with me, by the way. I have a question. question. Yeah, ask it. Okay. 
on the issue of pro-life versus pro-choice, yep. you have a hundred percent pro-life voting record, correct? Mm -hmm. How can you, as a man, sit here and say, or make a choice f about something that you, as a man, will never have to now really these, make this a decision is a good, on? Now we're now we're getting to the meat of things. This is a good question. <laughs> um, okay. Well, first, you have to understand that in New York State, um, when you're dealing with talking about a 100% pro-life voting record, there are bills that come before the New York State Legislature that are so extreme. Just like we talked about immigration, immigration is a perfect example of where the issue itself has been bastardized by the politics of extremism. Mm -hmm. And you can't have a, unfortunately our nation has yet to have a serious debate, pragmatic debate about. On the issue of abortion, because we are in the state of New York, there are some bills, for instance, that would force Catholic hospitals to perform late-term abortions or mm -hmm. shut their doors. I mean, they're absolutely so extreme. Um, simple things like uh, disbanding uh, any concept of parental notification or parental consent. And, uh, you know, the use of taxpayer dollars for late-term abortions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the agenda in New York on that issue tends to be so far to the left. I can tell you that my focus in the New York State Legislature has been one on reform, term limits, focusing on the corru corruption. Um, and I, on this specific social issue, I really think that the time has yet to come, and it needs to come, where we need to work together to make life an easier choice. Mm -hmm. um, I know people who, uh, family members, who stand outside abortion clinics. Um, I know people on, on the other side who have rallies and attack the people that they disagree with. And I think that if the individuals on the extremes on both sides would come together to find funding uh, and to work together to make life an easier choice, we would do more to provide safety and do more to protect more children than what we're currently doing. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see some common, common sense things like parental notification. Um, before you decide to have an abortion, which has got to be a horrific choice, no matter what you decide, that uh, you see a, a yes. picture of your child um, before making that, that decision. Um, and I think as a, a state level, we should let women know that no matter what choice you decide, if you decide to choose life, we will provide, whether it be housing, um, food for the child, mm -hmm. Those basic type, and, and also stress the option of adoption. So I think that on the, on the pro-life side, we're not doing a, a good enough job of communicating, A, against the extreme measures being pushed by the other side in the state, or by providing the necessary you know, uh, services and options to women who are facing what must be a horrific you know, decision. So, uh, you know, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. um, that has always and you been have my, a right to feel that way. <laughs> and it has always been my focus. Thank you. And that was, as you said, a meaty question. It is because you see a lot of times a lot of these laws that affect women only are really put in place by strictly men. And sometimes, as a woman, it's hard to see that and understand that where you can come from. Well, you know, I... And now, we, have no time now. we are out of yeah. time. Thank you for Thank you. talking Pleasure. with me tonight. And I think we have a lot of issues that are going to be covered, and we have a lot of great solutions. So thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Be back soon.